Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, it's John with Dividend Journey, guys. Hey, it's been a moment since I posted, but I wanted to bring this to your guys' attention. So, as us long-term dividend investors and passive income investors, we need to think long-term, guys, because guess what? Sometimes it takes a while to be able to get the goose that lays the golden egg, right? So, like I said, right here, I just want to share a few quick things with you guys. This isn't going to be too long. And that is just to give you a little bit of encouragement, right? And it helps me as well uh, stay on track myself even, right? So Warren Buffett's wealth, right? So people don't think like, people think of Warren Buffett and they think, oh, he's very wealthy, right? And maybe he's always been like that. No, on the contrary. So before he was 30, he had a goal actually by the time he was 30 to be able to uh, amass a million dollars, right? And that's even said right there. And you can actually even read that in a memoir that was written of Warren Buffett as well. And he actually did it. So here's an idea to show you, right? So this shows you Warren Buffett's age, right? So by the time he was 30, he had 1 million. You see today, at, or excuse me, at 91 anyways, when this was created, right? Um, yeah, he was at 91 billion, guys. So all the way from 91 billion to 1 million, guys. So you're talking the course of 61 years and you noticed, right? A good thing right here is literally like over 90% of the guy's wealth was generated in the last like 50 years of his life, pretty much, right? A uh, large, large per uh, percentage of it, right? So that's the thing, like if you think about it, right? People's wealth does not get built overnight. But the thing is Warren Buffett, how he started, right? Is he started with good, well, actually, <laughs> he started with what he called like cigarette butt stocks, right? But eventually he met a person known as Charlie Munger. And I'm just going to save you the article, but essentially, uh, Charlie Munger, if you look through each other's history, kind of got him to actually start buying more quality companies. That's kind of like him saying, which I may butcher it, guys, is uh, he would much rather buy a, you know, a great company at a fair price or at a good price, right? Well, fair price than buy a um, you know decent company at a uh, at a good price or yeah I butchered that a little bit guys but essentially right you go for the good high quality company go for that blue chip right go for that really good growing soon to be blue chip don't go for that penny stock that's a flyby and gone tomorrow so that's really key first off and that's how he created his wealth and if you see right here right. Literally, it just compounds and snowballs and snowballs and snowballs, as you can see here. Literally, I mean, look at this. It's phenomenal. You see 91 billion, right? And then le less than a decade before, like, you know, uh, not quite half, over half of that, but still substantially less. And then keeps going down, down, down. The snowball effect takes effect, guys. That's what I want to get at. So Warren Buffett can do it. You can do it as well. And so can I. So here you go, Jeff Bezos as well. Jeff Bezos, believe it or not, right? This unfortunately does not go all the way back, which I hate, but it goes back to 2012. And you can see how his wealth is also just snowballed and compound over the last decade as well, guys. Sitting in 2022 here, and this was chart was formed in 2012, so about a decade. Uh, as you can see, it's very highly tied to Amazon stock as well, because he owns 10% in uh, Amazon, the company Amazon, or at least according to the article here, right? But they give a lot of statistics and everything else, right? But here it is right here. Yeah, Bezos, 10% of Amazon. So, um, like I said, but his wealth also compounded as well. Now, the thing is, if you look back at Bezos back in the 90s, guys, I mean, you look on his beginning, like he came from a pretty humble beginning, right? So he actually, believe it or not, he was a former Wall Street computer engineer, right? Who created Amazon in 1994. He basically was selling books, guys. Uh, that was the start of Amazon, right? Um, sell books online, guys. So that was the thing. And this man just found that, you know, he provided awesome value to people and in turn ended up building, you know, an awesome solid company off of that. And that's where he is today. So if you look at both of them, guys, they both built a company or companies and businesses that people loved, guys, or that people just couldn't do without, that they were so convenient for everybody. So that's what I want you guys to think about. And same like for myself, always be thinking is what can you do to be able to build your passive income, whether you're going to have a business, own part of a business and have dividend payers, which is you owning part of the business or have your own small business or have 
some long-term or short-term real estate as well, guys. And you can have a combination approach of all these things, guys. Um, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all, really, when it comes to investing. I mean, there's so many things you can do here between the moon, right? Here in between the moon of all kinds of different ideas. Also, I tell myself, look, the compounding effect is long-term. So as you can tell, the last time I updated the video, um, my portfolio, the markets climbed back up a little bit. I don't really follow, like I'm long-term. I don't care about the short-term effects. But as you can tell, I tell myself the compounding effect is huge. Because look, not adding any more money to this portfolio just with drip alone by year 30, right? It would be dripping thir over $39,000. Now, obviously, inflation is going to eat up a decent chunk of that. But $39,000 compared to today of it dripping of 243 not even $44, 244 That's huge, guys. So that's the compound effect in effect right there by reinvesting dividends. And obviously, I'm going to add way more money to this. So that's going to just blow up. But um, like I said, it keeps you in check and it keeps you motivated and it keeps you happy, guys. And that's where you need to be. That's where your mindset needs to be. Think on the long term, right? Think on the Bezos long term approach right here, guys. And that's only 10 years. But if we go back to 90, the 90s, that his wealth was way down, way, way, way down, right? Not even in the millions. And then if we go to Warren Buffett, we can check Warren Buffett out. Same thing, right? He started from really humble beginnings and grew and grew and grew and it exponentially grew. So what I'm getting at, guys, is think long term always in all your businesses and all of your self um, goals as well. So if you set any new goals for the new year, don't beat yourself up that you didn't make it in the short term because keep a long term approach bit by bit, chunk by chunk. You'll get there. Also. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel, guys. Um, I'll be posting a lot more videos in this upcoming year. And uh, once I get everything situated fully, I'm kind of in a transition process between the uh, you know, separating active duty Navy and uh, moving into my next long-term career, guys, and uh, power lines, actually, believe it or not. Uh, I know it's kind of ironic. You'd think it was financials, but no, it's not. I Like I said, I enjoy a diverse set of skills myself, guys. I love investing, love finance, um, love real estate, love dividends, and I like electrical and I like challenges, guys. I love the outdoors. So, like I said, please consider subscribing, guys. Um, you know, please stay tuned for a lot more videos. I'm going to have more in the real estate sector, um, you know, series on that, tax advantages. And then uh, we're also going to be, uh, you know, doing a lot more dividend videos as well. And it's going to be really fun when I start contributing a lot more money to this portfolio, guys. All right. You guys take care. See you next time.